What's going on, folks? Once again, I'm Nev from Nev's Tech Bits, otherwise known as your friendly neighborhood basement dweller. Don't worry, ma'am, I am from the internet, and today we're checking out my i5 ninth generation. We got a really nice card in there, though, an RTX 5000. Of course, since this is a Quadro, we have error-correcting RAM, which is all right. It makes things a little bit slower. It's not exactly a gaming system, but um, or a gaming card, but it can pull off some wonderful games. Now, you got to be careful not to get a graphics card that is more power. Got to wait a sec while all this stuff comes in. It's good to make sure that you get a video card that will work well with your CPU because not all CPUs work with all video cards and it's a real pain in the butt. It's really interesting but you get the sync cable here so you can hook it up to other cards and other computers and whatnot to make sure that everything syncs together. I've seen these being used in movies where you have green screens in the background and rear projection will project the image to the screen like Hollywood. This card, Hollywood, with the sync so that uh, the actors could see the location that they were working. And the sync function made it so that multiple computers would be in sync and that one rear projection screen wasn't off compared to the other rear projection screen. That might even be the case in this situation. But anyways, let's get to the end of this test. Ooh, wow, what's the spinny girl getting her headaches? Here we had DirectX 9 going at, oh wow, 250 frames per second thereabout. Yeah, not bad at all. That's pretty quick, right? Nice and smooth. Next up, of course, we have DirectX 10. We're going at about, geez, 160, 90, 75, 46. We're going pretty quick. Now, this is the real test. When you zoom in and you get the asteroids coming, and it has no issues with that at all. Man, I'm impressed. I am legitimately impressed because I see a lot of uh, graphics cards that just can't handle this stuff at all. Oh yeah, that one's the worst right there. But this one, not bad. We're getting a little bit of lag here and there, but... Uh, and here we have DirectX 11. Nice and smooth. Let's see those jellyfish on the turn. We don't want no jagged jellyfish, that's for sure. And these jellies are looking not too bad at all with that turn. Yeah, okay, I'm liking what I see here. Not so bad. Not bad at all. Next up, DirectX 12. We are going at 80, 90 frames per second. I've seen better. Not so many, though. Nice and smooth. Let's get that mouse out of the way. They always do that. To infinity and beyond, yeah. All right. After a nice little conversation with AI, it turns out that this card is being used at its full potential, basically. Um, ninth generation i5, six core should work fine with this unit. But sometimes you get times when you buy a GPU that just... It will not be used anywhere near its full potential. Now, I used to have the 4070 in here, and that just did not work work out, so I booped it. Interesting how the 4070 is faster than the 5000. Holy fur, it's 180-something times more faster than the 5000. That's amazing. And in the end, we get a perfect little score of 6,400 and let's say 50. I like that. Not so bad. You can definitely do some gaming with this thing. So you can pick up an RTX 5000 for about 600, it looks like. But I have had better luck buying computers that had it in. Uh, so sometimes you can get workstations that have these cards on the inside and just buy the workstation and you'll end up paying less. That's how I got this one. $300 and it came with a computer. Oh hell, there's a 36 gig version. Wow. And little old me only has got the 16 giggers. Life so hard. All right, it's possible I just got really lucky for finding it for that very low price. Now, it should be said that this isn't the kind of card that you want if you're gaming. This is the kind of card that you want if you're doing um, 
CAD work, uh, SolidWorks, um, yeah, SolidWorks, AutoCAD, Master Draft, Draft Site, uh, stuff like that's what you're going to be wanting to use this video card for. But if you got this video card and you like gaming, you're not going to be having a whole lot of problems. Of course, if you're doing AI, you're going to want a little bit more. Um, you're definitely going to want more than 24 gigs RAM, I believe. RAM's becoming more and more of a big deal these days. I got someone who was a contractor for uh, uh, the government defense here in Canada, a contractor, and they've discovered that you can't have Microsoft Office 365 and running Teams video working at the same time. You gotta have at least 16 gigs for that. Anything less, it just won't work. Huh, the AI says that this video card is about the same as an 8 gigabyte GDDR8 2080 RTX Super. I wonder what those go for. So yeah, if you're gaming, maybe it's best to go with the RTX 2080 Super. It's a lot more affordable. Now, if you're doing AI and you can find one of these on the cheap, I suggest you do. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for me. Neff from Nasdaq, but otherwise known as your friendly neighborhood basement dweller. Don't worry, ma'am, I am from the internet and get on her.